maybe as a start, uh, what I often hear when I enter a new company, well, with us, everything's different. Well, everything with us is uh, cl finished completely. We don't have any problems with the budget. And of course, uh, no problem. We also have sufficient uh, resources internally. No problems. Uh, do you know this? <laughs> have you experienced such projects where everything works fine? Everything worked out? Please give me a show of hand. <laughs> we will actually give this person a job right, <laughs> right away because this is really rare. Who... Uh, so, uh, Horst Hubers and Stefan Born's uh, presentation before. Michael, you were there, yes. Uh, I found this very inspiring, what the two said on stage. And it was uh, actually more about another topic. But uh, what uh, was stressed time and again by the two was the fact that uh, it is no longer foreseeable um, as it was with the regular uh, projects that were done in accordance with the waterfall uh, principle. Everybody knew exactly when what was finished, when what uh, was expected. This is no longer the case. Today we speak of agile project management because with today agility you can respond to unforeseen facts far better. Stefan Born um, uh, explained it by saying uh, that uh, co uh, the uh, projects are so complex and the complexity of projects makes uh, such a difference uh, um, to how you can successfully complete a project today. And this is why agile project uh, concepts are a good possibility to successfully guide companies through projects. But before we uh, start in Medias Res, a few words on the two of us. Who are we? Well, uh, <laughs> thank you. My name is Raphael Schröder. I am the CEO of Media Office and uh, I'm here with my colleague today to talk about project management well, I'm the CEO and I also accompany the IT projects from the commercial viewpoint, but also from the project management point of view. Sascha Pöstl, my name, I'm the uh, project manager, as you can imagine, but also a consultant. I consult companies in PIM introduction, what is needed, what needs to be done, what is uh, required to successfully introduce such a project. And this is why I focus on project management and consulting. Well, um, uh, maybe a few words on Media Office. Yes, I, we have to shell, sell you our shop window. Who are we? Media Office. So we've been on the market since 1961 at times, uh, basically when print was done differently than today. We uh, owner managed, uh, uh, located in Convestheim, have 20 employees and specialize in PIM implementation. Uh, we're content serve partners and uh, Redexa, and we're also a uh, certified print partner. Uh, we have uh, now also discovered text automation and work with AI semantics. Um, we want to accompany our customers sustainably in the fields of uh, um, text um, generation and export to channels which are very wide and uh, varied these days. And uh, um, we build on the experience of over uh, 50 years of uh, media generation, consulting uh, on publishing and print uh, also forms part of this, like um, online and shop. And, uh, and uh, of course, uh, um, to make things look nice in layout or how you actually can implement things in production. This is also what we accompany. We are um, subdivided into three units, consulting. This uh, actually uh, uh, is important for consulting uh, uh, externally. Then uh, solutions where we actually provide our customers with the right tools and then accompany this with the media solutions and implementation and with programming. Solutions, um, well, this is consulting, IT solutions, media solutions, uh, um, really uh, broken down. Uh, on these charts 
our partners, and we're very proud of them, with whom we uh, implement uh, projects, uh, are of course uh, uh, back by with the print suite and content serve. And uh, we can also have uh, a built expertise over the past few years, and this is why this is featured in this chart. The implementation of complex projects, uh, uh, we've uh, also received several awards by manufacturers, and this is really, really fun to uh, receive such a recognition. Okay, before we really get uh, started, such a project uh, goes through various uh, stages typically. And let's probably first look at the theory, uh, the theoretical phases or stages. The eight stages you typically go through from the first idea to the standard operation until everything has been introduced and uh, is up and running. Let me touch upon these eight stages because this is really the basis you need without knowing how to approach it best and how to complete such a project successfully. So uh, let's get started. The first step at the very beginning is the idea that you have. You need a software solution. You want to uh, put something into practice uh, before uh, you, you, you're thinking about introducing a new print solution to produce catalogs or other printed uh, matters. And this is why it is important to note that there is a um, re demand you have to define. The targets, the uh, aims and the needs, to sim not just simply say we need something new, but also uh, give some thought to the uh, looks and feels you want to have, because the expectations can vary widely. We need a solution that is easy to handle, and the management says, but it shouldn't cost uh, a lot. Marketing says we need a solution and we need a nice output at the very end. The data colleagues, of course, want to have a solution uh, where data is easy and clean to manage. And this is why you have to give it some thought beforehand. Also important in this context, you have some, there is something available in companies. You don't start from zero. Uh, you, and this is why you have to have a look at what is already there, how can I probably continue using it, and maybe how can it cooperate with a new solution. Also important, think about the costs of the whole project. And where is the benefit? Is there a nice cost-benefit ratio? Or is the solution probably overdoing it, overshooting it because it's too expensive? What's in it for me at the end of the day? And what's often being forgotten, who later works with the system later in the company and to who can really support the new solution because such a software does not introduce it itself. Um, you, some of you are implementation partners and you are aware of this problem. We also need support, uh, internal support. There must be sufficient resources made available in company departments for such an introduction. And when? That's the big question. When should it be ready? Uh, despite all of the dynamics and the agility and the complexities, you want to be done with it sooner or later. And this is why you should think early about when you want to be done and what the way there looks like. So a rough roadmap before we look at the next steps. Next stage, uh, knowing what I want and what I need. And now I need the uh, appropriate solution, but also the appropriate uh, uh, implementation partner, because as a rule, I cannot do it by myself. I need some external assistance. And there's also a process to get uh, to the best solution and the best partner. 
the uh, vendor selection uh, also goes through various individual steps. And I don't want to dwell on this uh, because we're also running out of time. But by and large, this process should also be done properly. Don't skip it by saying, well, I heard about this fantastic solution uh, um, called to Content Surf and to Print Commit. Sounds nice, but it's probably not the right one for my needs. And this is why I should give it some thought beforehand and uh, actually do the due diligence in my vendor selection process after I know what I need and want and then actually go for the vendor selection process. I can only endorse what you said. I uh, know projects um, where we did the consulting and the employee said, uh, um, for us, it is important to have the steps one through four. Well, we said, no, we will have to do, find a solution for this. And then they said, well, then we cannot introduce this solution. Only when we talk to the employees, uh, we found out that this was a functional issue. Um, how is an imperial data model, which uh, worked with these uh, cryptic words one through four, um, how is this to be transferred? Um, we needed a completely new view, a new perspective. So in the vendor selection, it needs to be designed in such a fashion that you're not re really thinking in terms of old systems, in terms of what uh, I used before and how I've worked before, but that you think in terms of the new targets defined, where I want to go. And based on these targets, um, I define the vendor selection, because then I come up and find the solution that fits me in structural terms, a pointer maybe. Not everyone has can look back on experience. At times you have people who come with this experience under the belt, but it is strongly advisable to obtain external support. A neutral provider, there's one sitting in the first row doing this, can the Zimio company is such a provider. They can support you in this uh, in a neutral way, and this ensures you that you end up with the right solution and not not just one that uh, um, actually results from buddies or because the presentation looked so uh, cool. Next step or stage um, is planning already. Again, the planning stage, it uh, sounds like waterfall. I plan everything in detail so I know exactly when, what will be done, what. This no longer works. Nevertheless, we have to plan and we also have to say we cannot actually get started with an open end 100%. We have to know when we want to be finished and what are the individual steps leading there to infer what we need. And this goes hand in hand with a detailed brief. And this is already done with the service provider and corporation. Um, then I have to plan the project budget. I have to know how much money I can work with because I hardly know uh, a client with a blank check. Go for it. Will work out. At this point, it is important to define who assumes the responsibility because I often had discussions afterwards. Everybody says, Oh, it was not me, not me. Um, I'll hide away uh, when things go wrong. So please, beforehand, define very clearly who is responsible and who assumes responsibility. Next stage is the implementation. You also do this in cooperation with the service provider. Uh, system must be installed, the adaptations must be performed, data must be migrated. This is also always an issue, data migration. This can be um, an, an element that can be far more extensive than you thought before. Well, it's uh, all different with us. Um, we only have the data, we have the data, we simply have to import it. Uh, yeah, everything available in Excel spreadsheets, yeah, yes. I've never seen this happen. As a rule, uh, data migration is one of the 
biggest risk factors in such a system implementation because um, you cannot foresee how long it is really going to take because this often requires data uh, updating and editing and this is also an opportunity a big opportunity to really question your data again whether this data is really meaningful and this not only applies to data but uh, also uh, also to the the uh, workflow the layout <laughs> um, very important involve all of the parties uh, the agency because uh, a layout isn't worth anything if you cannot automate it but on the other hand fully automate uh, automated uh, um, layout generation is probably a little unsightly so um, um, this needs to be done together with all of the experts uh, to get the, the best result at the end of the day and do not forget the employees and training them. This is uh, often done on the fly. Um, this it uh, you should train key users in the implementation stage because they cooperate and this is why they should familiar with the system because this also helps building support and adoption um, during the implementation stage. If the client doesn't say, well, dear service provider, you finish it and then you provide a brief training and we'll work with it afterwards. No. Uh, at an early stage, please involve the employees, train them, uh, train the administrators and the key users because they will be the ones probably later who train their people so that they can provide support. Um, Self-explanatory, uh, you have to create uh, training materials, a service desk or an external uh, staff uh, support must be installed so that um, customers, employees can also be assisted later on. Uh, relatively towards the end, uh, and this is not really correct because you have to constantly test the system, but uh, as soon as you're approaching the, uh, the go live, you need a test phase. So in addition to the ongoing testing, you should also allow for a proper test stage or phase in which uh, you do some structured targeted testing. I have to define test cases, I have to define the test procedure, I have a bug fixing phase that I need and of course at the end of the day I also have the release stage and only once you've gone through the whole cycle, and this is done in several cycles usually, iteration cycles, you won't manage uh, the first thing around because always things crop up last minute, things that need to be re-edited or maybe even new requirements uh, show up. So please, please allow for this stage as well. Then you've got the go live, uh, the hypercare uh, stage. Now I migrate the data from either an existing uh, system to the new system or I do the di data migration from other sources and I start with the real operation. Again, uh, when I replace other systems, uh, there is a cutover phase. So there's a cutover from an old a legacy to a new system. This needs to be planned. And at the end, afterwards, uh, uh, please allow for the hypercare stage where I have an increased need for care. Because by experience, we know uh, the go live will not solve all of the, uh, the, the, the teething troubles. Any remarks? No remarks, no. Well, and then we actually transfer or transition to standard operation when you no longer have the development implementations. This stage is about the ordinary operation. This uh, includes updates and maintenance. Here you should uh, talk to your employees and colleagues on a regular basis. What can be improved? What is the feedback? How do people use the system? Does it all work? Because you thought it up in theory and in practice things often look differently. Um, 
of course uh, you have cases where employees uh, come up with workarounds because uh, they, they they understand they don't understand this or that element so it is important to actually identify where there are any possible potential hiccups and then new requirements and demands are added so a project is never quite over because systems constantly develop further uh, I can't tell I can't say this is the software I've built we're done uh, and and for three years no there are always new requirements uh, maybe new markets that need to be served and this goes hand in hand with new languages maybe I have new articles and products I need to include in the range or new ranges so there's always something added or another system is replaced in the company these are all follow-up projects uh, uh, following later so this was a little dry the theory so what you need as, as a workflow but uh, when you've really completed uh, these eight steps or stages then the stress later on is is, is reduced in the project but uh, there is also a few more things that you should pay attention to and this is more of the things that um, what happens in between the lines? We heard planning is important, uh, starting early, but going hand in hand with this, and this is very often the issue, at the project beginning you are highly motivated and ambitious. Well, in half a year's time we will have introduced the system when we're done quickly with it. <sighs> If you do not exactly know what you're in for and you probably don't know what you want to achieve in the end, uh, things will become difficult. Yeah, you can't say we'll be finished quickly, no problem. This is just a software installation. We'll install it on the server and it'll all, all go fine. It takes more than this. So please, please define the expectations and the targets. Please, let me urge you, always remember the targets and the aims. What do I want to achieve? Which media do I want to implement? Which data sheets, uh, uh, brochures or catalogs? What do I want to produce with such a system? This is really important to think about it uh, right at the beginning and to structure these demands. The agency needs to be involved early on, uh, this was said before. And if you actually uh, launch a completely new IT project, a new solution, it is recommendable uh, for uh, the first cooperation in the new setting to not produce or uh, address uh, uh, the big big catalog but go for data sheets so something smaller uh, that something that is easily governable and uh, to actually produce a quick win uh, for all parties involved to get the uh, feel for it and uh, how does this work, how do I handle it, uh, is my setup correct and how can I uh, coordinate matters with others and fine-tune the processes. Start with a small project then um, I also have quick wins for the investors uh, to report successes. I can argue, well, see, um, I published this uh, printed matter in, in this time and it can be used productively. And then to leverage this tailwind to actually carry on with the bigger projects or parts of the project. What's uh, easily forgotten is uh, that there is a very intense cooperation between the service provider and the project team, but such a client has more employees and colleagues, and they're aware of the new software introduction. In the worst case scenario, uh, they misunderstand this. In other words, they think, Ooh, 
we're in danger. Our job is in danger, especially in specific areas. Certain tasks or processes have uh, been established. Some have actually found their place there for colleagues and they have their daily doing. And all of a sudden, there's this new software cropping up and that obviously does everything differently. What does this mean for me? Uh, will I lose my job because the software does it automatically all now? So this is why it is so important to actually um, also communicate with the rest of the company beyond the team that you work with on a daily basis. Also other colleagues, employees who probably have to work with the software and that you really advertise for this new solution in the whole company because it offers opportunities such as software solution is not introduced to kick out people no you want to improve matters you probably want to improve the situation reduce redundant work unnecessary work so that the colleagues can focus on other more exciting jobs and tasks and this means um, that you become more efficient uh, as a company as a whole and thereby secure jobs at the end of the day. How do I do this? Uh, usually, I have to communicate on a regular basis. So I really have to inform regularly and communicate in an open and transparent manner, not only in the pro project team, but also externally with the others to build confidence in the whole project, in the software that's to be introduced, but to maybe also deal with concerns early on. There may be justified concerns if others realize what uh, we want to install. And you should listen to these concerns and take them seriously and actually feed it back uh, to the project. Yeah, there's another tip I would like to give. Always uh, communicate uh, um, with with a, co a copy and paste in a big list, um, and then then uh, then you have the best success. Um, no, you shouldn't do that. This was I was just kidding. Um, if you actually. Uh, uh, use a tool for communication uh, that controls this. We uh, actually use the Jira by Alasia and uh, with a ticket system so all users are involved and don't send it as a circular mail. Um, and with this tool we inform all users about new tickets, new steps and um, and then you can also uh, have full control of the uh, project. But don't send out emails. Don't do a circular email. <laughs> Comment off the mic. Uh, another point uh, that uh, initially uh, is um, uh, very detailed in the beginning project controlling now we're getting started and we've defined uh, what will cost uh, how much and uh, and we of course do the monthly settlements we know how much budget is left but then uh, the dynamics develop and then you probably uh, realize well the data model was uh, a lot faster we've got some budget left but there's another area that will take a lot longer so uh, um, the impact on the budget overall will be probably zero. Everything is green. The budget will suffice. But if I do not uh, actually control this, uh, then I will lose the oversight at a certain point. And this is unpleasant, especially when I'm faced with uh, extra expenditure because we're speaking of agile working here. So we want to be able to spontaneously respond to new facts. Um, and this, as a result, may also mean that I have probably higher expenses than I originally thought. This needs to be considered accordingly and should also immediately uh, be included in the planning and communicated and coordinated with the clients, the stakeholders, uh, who uh, later are responsible for the budget in the company. Because afterwards it's always difficult saying, well, it, uh, it, it lasted a lot longer, it took longer. And all of a sudden a budget of maybe 200,000 euros turns into a budget of 400,000 euros. And this is unpleasant, really unpleasant. 
you have to make sure that there is a regular control taking place. You can do it trivially uh, in, in an Excel spreadsheet where I um, actually look at my monthly budgets, what is left. Or you can also have tools uh, supporting you, capturing times uh, and the systems that help me to do the controlling. You should pay attention to this and, and place emphasis on this so you do not end up uh, so that uh, the the budget is, is spent but the project is not really completed and the uh, client says well we thought you're doing fine with the 200,000 euros there's no more budget left for this year this is very unpleasant so talk about it early on when you talk about it early on maybe it's not a problem and the functional uh, controlling um, together with the commercial uh, uh, controlling verify it it's no good to say uh, well, I'm still on uh, uh, pl on budget, but in functional terms, uh, uh, I've uh, reached 50% of uh, the costs, but I've only achieved 20% of the functionality. So this controlling must factor in the, the, the actual facts, so the functional level. We talked about uh, training and education. Train the trainer is a buzzword. This is good recommendation, but uh, I mentioned this in more detail before. So at an early stage, you involve the project team and uh, allow them to work in the system. As a rule, we've acquired very positive experience with this because um, you cr uh, cr raise more awareness amongst the colleagues who are supposed to work with the system later. So involve them at an early stage. Uh, time plan, roadmap, yeah, I said it in the beginning. We need a target. We want to be done one day. And these highly ambitious targets that are initially defined, that are uh, probably dictated from above, this also happens, uh, that the service provider says, well, it takes us 9 to 12 months, and the management says, oh no, uh, it needs to be done in 6 months because we know what we're in for and we have everything. Yeah, this is what they initially said, the management. Hmm. Please be a little more conservative in your planning and allow for buffers, because uh, I prefer having um, some time at the end and be finished early, like with the budget, um, rather than saying, well, there's so much of the project left, but there's no time left or no budget left. And there can also be interdependencies with other systems. Maybe a legacy system is simply switched off and replaced. This is all issues uh, that uh, require some safety buffer. So allow for it and take it seriously because the experience simply shows uh, one or two problems will uh, crop up. As, as well as you may be working, problems will occur. And yes, the go live stage or the hypercare stage, uh, make resources available. Uh, don't say, no, we're going live, now the system's up and running. On both sides, there will be a stage uh, taking uh, several weeks, more than several weeks, that will need more resources. Please remember this, even once the system has gone live, I will have to work on it. Testing, we mentioned this before, and I alluded to this. You have to draw up a test plan cases. Test cases must be drawn up. Testing is a really important point because um, you can save a lot of work. Uh, uh, such a test plan that I draw up during the uh, development stage can be used, not just once. Because when I'm done, one day the software has been introduced, I have new developments, and I have to test those again. So once I have these test plans in my drawer, I can use them again uh, for testing and save a lot of time for each migration. Yes, for each migration. I always have software updates that are required. When I do a software update, I have to test. And once I have the test plans ready, then I don't have to start from scratch time it again. 
and then pick the IR articles from the range that are really representative for the data model. Um, what is important uh, for the country specific ranges and assortments. So always go for representative articles and cover all of the cases that can occur for such testing. Change management, that's another topic. Would you like to say a few words about it? Yeah, this is the human side, uh, because projects are not only technology, but they also involve human beings, and you have to reach out to their brains, to their heads, you have to thrill them, you have to not leave them behind and uh, make them part of the project. Challenges um, are often uh, occurring when non-industry co-workers need to be involved without IT experience um, who change to a new team they also have to be taken along on this journey in terms of the system but also in terms of the, the topic the subject so we have to talk to the people and uh, never lose sight of the, the targets and the aims. This creates security and never losing sight of uh, the aims um, also forms part of, of course, uh, monitoring feedback and continuous improvement. Always talk to the colleagues. Question, is the system really used as originally planned? Does it fulfill the expectations? So again, talk, talk, talk talk with the people because this is the only way to improve to improve all of the the workflows and the system as a whole this because uh, as initially said we want to aim for improvement the newly introduced system should not be worse but better we want to simplify matters and this is why you have to talk to the people very often what happens is that uh, the, the problems uh, that you have in handling a software uh, um, gives rise to workarounds. You find ways to work around the actual solution because I simply don't know any better. But when I talk to the people, then I probably find out and can show them how to avoid those workarounds, do it properly, uh, or I can com come up with a solution, uh, how to do it right with the system instead of the workaround. Uh, so you can also in, in, in install a system for suggestions for improvement. You can make an internal challenge or um, uh, if, if you make a good suggestion, you'll get a bonus or some sort of recognition. Well, over there, you heard the hands clapping, the uh, applause. We're also, we've also reached the last chart now here. I hope um, it uh, provided you with some insights. It is, of course, difficult in the uh, short amount of time available to actually go through such a presentation at a pig's gallop, so to speak. But um, we're working with people here. We're not only working with any type of technology systems or machinery. We're working with people. So always make sure that you uh, always keep talking, that you exchange with each other, the, that you also pay attention to those who have to work with the, with the uh, who have to work with the system later. Um, this is a good uh, transition because we will stay around for the next days and uh, we will also be available to tonight. If you have any questions, if you wish to exchange with us uh, on your own experience approaches, please, uh, we have an open air for you and maybe we can actually provide you with some solutions. We would be happy to do so. Thank you. We would be happy.